Can you hear me? There's yeah, that. Look, look at the look at the look at the set. Look at the background. That's fancy schmancy, <laughs> pal. No, what's up? But, yeah, no, thanks. Um, yeah, so yeah, Blue Gamer is actually something I started in the late '90s, early 2000s, maybe. You know, I'm wow, you've been in it for a while. Yeah, to give some context, I am 40, so I'm. I think I'm older than I look. You are mm -hmm. older than you look. Yes, yeah, okay. it's so, pathetic. Fuck you. <laughs> but no. So what's cool is I was, you know, blogging early on, like when that was the thing to do. Me too. Will Wheaton inspired me to blog when I was working oh. on. Uh, we hadn't even shipped God of War one yet, and I started reading his blog. My mic's about to fall off, and uh, and I was like, oh, this is fun. So I started doing it, and I loved it. And then yeah, inevitably that leads to. Twitter and then streaming and yeah, all that stuff. and the video stuff. So then I was making video content for Blue Gamer, and this is funny because this is something that's related to you. Back okay. in late two thousands, early twenty yep. tens, this was before Drawn to Death came out, before it was even announced. Okay, but it was that you were working on something, and this was a time where I started pivoting to mimicking what journalists were doing on Twitter and on social yeah. media because I was like, yeah. okay, exactly. I was like, okay, this is then how I'm going to get popular. And okay. I, and it was funny and it wasn't like a big deal or anything. I just, you had an interview where you, it sounded like you were saying you're making a shooter, but then you're saying, no, I'm not making a shooter. And then I like posted some, oh, David Jaffe's making a shooter. And you're like, no, no. And you know, just classic, you know, that, that was great. Um, but so, but it was interesting. It was that time, you know, where there's all this crap on social media. And I, I got to a point where it's like, I can't do blue gamer anymore the youtube channel like it's it was a mix of just how people are on social media or even me getting codes and then feeling like okay i need to play every game and stream every game and record you get, every you game. get codes for you mean yeah yeah and yeah. then i would just get burnt out so so i then went back to like really focus on like my professional career because i'm married i've got kids i my whole thing was you know i'm just gonna focus on that um and then it's funny, and I want to talk more about this before, but are you familiar with Gundam? Yeah, it's uh, the thing the, the little kids play with. Little, little you, you would think I so. I know what it is. You would yes. think so. I'm well, kidding. I'm fucking with you. Yes, I, and do, isn't Gundam in uh, Call of Duty this month, right? Is it Gundam or? Yes, it is. And I want yeah. to get to that too a little later. This I've seen the giant oh. life-size ones that move in Japan. Yeah, I get it. I, I, okay. I it, You know, I was a Shogun Warrior kid. I'm about 13 oh, yeah. years older than you are. So I missed out on the sort of... Uh, import of anime where kids got into like Gundam and what was the other robot? That, that was the same thing with me. So oh, okay. I didn't discover Gundam until about 2019. And this was a little bit after like Star Wars started disappointing me because I'm a huge oh, right. Star Wars fan, huge yep. Star Wars fan. And, and even my complaints for Star Wars aren't really like woke this, woke that. It's really just more of just basic storytelling a lot of the times or just weird decisions because they're kind of like, what can we do? And Star Wars, when you think about it, is really interesting because what, you know, when you really think about what you buy when you buy Star Wars is Disney. Um, yeah. th it's a story. Now, the universe is really cool, and I get that, and I get that there was a lot of world building from sort of the unofficial canon now, like, you know, Timothy Zahn and all that stuff. Right. But... Ultimately, the only thing that I think most people really ever fell in love with, like at a level that would motivate a $4 billion purchase, which is what Disney paid, was the George Lucas Skywalker saga story. Yeah. And anything outside of that is not, not just potentially great and sometimes even better. But I think that's kind of one of the problems maybe they're having now is that it's like, wait, what is Star Wars? You know, that's when you take away point. Luke's story yeah. and his family story, it's just a generic kind of space stuff with a big budget you yeah, know? and people like the lightsabers and the force stuff i do too but i actually originally got into it when i was younger because the space combat like i was like oh yeah. space combat is cool and that's kind of how it started but then i was at it was 2019 at a GameStop. i was like let me buy a model kit to build with my son my youngest because i yeah. noticed they had model kits there and they had something that was gundam and i was like okay i've heard about this built it loved it decided to look into the the show and the movies and realized okay so unlike star wars what gundam does is it has multiple universes the consistency is the gundam the giant mech with usually a v fin on the top mm -hmm. i was like look that's an interesting way to go about is it, it are they aware is it is it when no. you say different universes not you mean more like final fantasy not like mcu where they're multiverses and exactly okay exactly okay. unrelated to each other and so okay. What I realized uh, from diving more into this was the original Gundam 1979. Um, 
it's actually really good. It it's not for kids, and to me, it's Star Wars but better. So when you say it's not for kids, you mean it's like adult anime, or it's just more of a mature story that more kids of a aren't going to vibe with because it's like I'm not into that. Yeah, stuff. like let me give you an example of what got me into this is like, for instance, in the first, in a new hope, Luke blows up the death star. That's like how many millions of people. And then they're like celebrating in the hangar. Sure. They were about to, but you know, that's a big deal in Gundam, the main character, and he happens to be 15 and they make comment or 16. They make comments about y- y- why are we having young soldiers, blah, blah, blah. And he actually accidentally gets thrust into this. He, and he knows and how he's, to pilot. He's controlling them. Yeah. So people know these are giant robots with people inside, right? Exactly. They got Amaro Ray. His father built this Gundam. They were being attacked. So he just jumped in it to help. And he took out the bad guys. But what's interesting is the main character, Amaro Ray, then gets a, a degree of like PTSD. And maybe that's the wrong term, but it's because he just killed someone. Right. So kids are going to be like, what the fuck is going on? They're not uh, understood. Understood. And, now, this was in, you discovered this at what year was this? Uh, 2019. Okay. So was it weird after, because you had already had at least your youngest son, right? With a model kit, right? Yeah, he didn't care. Okay, yeah, but was it weird that your wife stopped having sex with you? <laughs> hey, when she got with me, my first place wall to wall with a video game collection, I ended up selling, but I had a gigantic physical video game collection from ColecoVision all the way to Ooh, ColecoVision, man. And I was able to Those box. I love the ColecoVision boxes. Oh, I loved my ColecoVision. Uh, yeah, it, it, sorry, it, go ahead. No, it, it was so me, she fell in love with you with or because what in spite of or because. Well, I think it was because she kn- knows I wouldn't be like going out. I'm not spending money on cars. <laughs> OK, fair enough. All right. Good for you. Um, anyway, so back to Gundam. Yeah. So well, it sounds great. I want I want to watch it now. If I would if I you're a you brand new Gundam guy would you start in 79 or it doesn't I would. hold up you I would. would okay and the one thing that was interesting is I wasn't one that typically liked anime I thought it was cringy and I think you know looking back it was wrong of me to judge like that but uh, what I've realized is in Japan like anime is just a means to tell a story whereas in the west a lot of times if something is a cartoon it's like okay is this a hyper violent thing or is this like for kids you know sometimes or people like, oh, well, that's a cartoon. I'm not going to watch that, you know. But in Japan, it's a lot different, and they'll tell. Is it? I'm, I just got to ask. I don't mean to interrupt, but I'm no. just I'm interested. I love it. Yeah. Uh, well, I know if people have been telling me it's like Jaffe. Whenever you go on people's shows, you, uh, fuck you. I don't care. I do care, I but I don't care because it's interesting. I'm passionate. Yeah. I'm excited because it's now I'm going. When you say anime is a, dirty, you know, I mean I'm familiar with anime. I'm familiar with manga. I'm yeah. not like a hardcore guy, but I like it. You know, but when you say it's a different way or it's just a way to tell a story, are they seeking it out when they have a story because it's simply more affordable to tell their big epic or is it more because they can do all kinds of crazy shit that they could not really do? I think it's all the above. It's all the above. I think maybe a history too of manga being so important and more of, they looked at anime as animated manga and not like a cartoon. Right. So a lot of, and, and we'll get into some filmmaking here in a second because a lot of what that, early anime does especially like early gundam is it frames every shot as if a film director would be oh yeah doing it. yeah it's, yeah the creator of gundam uh oh yoshioko tomino uh, i think i said that right uh, it's just like a george lucas exactly like a george lucas where this guy has a vision and he almost snuck in this story to be told because it was going to be a kid's cartoon and they're going to sell robots and oh they, it, okay so it didn't start as an adult thing well 79 well it was planned to be, but they snuck in an adult story. So when it aired, it was the super serious show. And how and it, was it a success right it, off the bat? No, actually it failed, but then people wanted it so bad that they took the whole series, cut it into three movies, and they th- theatrically ran them afterwards. <clears throat> and now it's their biggest, I, one of their biggest IPs. So educate me on this. Gundam, is Gundam Bandai Namco now? Yeah. So mm-hmm. what is the other kind of Coke to their Pepsi or Pepsi to their Coke? Because there's another big robot. Uh, it's not Shogun Warriors. That's still relevant, but I don't remember. So sometimes I'll see it and I'll go, oh, it's Gundam. And someone says, no, it's the other one. Evangelion, um, maybe? Yes, that's right. Yeah. That's right. Okay. Which I couldn't get into that. I tried. Um, I've never I've never watched any of them. But uh, but anyway, I'm thinking what, I, what I'm – and so where I'm getting with all this is while Blue Gamer was failing, I was like, okay, Gundam is interesting. Let me – make a whole new YouTube channel where I focus on the business side of running a YouTube channel. And it's been 
three years. I'm at 7,000. Not a lot yet, but like 10 is usually when it, uh, but I've had so many opportunities open up from that, but I've learned so much from this Gundam channel that I decided to go back to Blue Gamer, try to redo all that stuff. Okay. So I got to ask about this because I'm a, I'm a YouTuber that's trying to grow my channel and all this stuff. So you had your Blue Gamer channel at first, at least at the moment, you're like, that's not working out. So I'm going to do a Gundam channel. Yeah. And that was successful. Yeah, and the reason was... More niche, right? Yeah, exactly. There wasn't a lot of Western-produced English speakers on YouTube that were teaching people about Gundam because I was surprised how awesome Gundam is, and I never learned about it until I was like 36 or 37. I was like, wow, where has this been uh, right. my whole life? Because it fills that void of Star Wars, and they still come out with... It is just a couple years ago. They, they still come out with new movies in that universe, and they're still just the same, like... They don't compromise on storytelling. Um, is it is it only movies now, or is there manga and series and all that, or it's just uh, movies? It, it's it, so right now it's mainly movies. But the, we're, okay, it's so confusing. The main timeline that I like is called Universal Century. Oh yeah, I've heard about it. I'm okay, yeah, so I, I, that oh no <laughs> shows, and yeah. then and then lately now it's been movies. There's like a trilogy going on right now. The first one came out a couple years ago. The second one's going, but it goes in order of like the time kind of in the timeline of so you, so you see some same characters sometimes you don't but it's the politics in the background that are very mm -hmm. similar where it's in the future humans are colonizing uh space colonies so they're not like on other planets yet um but uh what happens is people on earth feel oppressed or people in space feel oppressed by people on earth so then there's that where then, okay, we're going to evade. And so the, the main point that- So it's it human off, versus human with robots. Yeah. And so okay. the main thing that kicks it off is the people in space hijack a space colony and send it to Earth. And it causes massive destruction. And that's the start of like this war okay. that happens. So, so and these are uh, anime or there, I'm yeah. sure there's been live action ones so at this point. So there's a live action in the works. And that's actually another reason I started the channel because I knew I could, you right. know- but it ha it hasn't come out. Jordan Volt Roberts, who did, oh yeah, yeah. I've spoken to him. He did oh, Kong Island, and yeah. uh, and uh, he's supposed to do Metal Gear. Metal Gear, yeah. And he's doing Gundam for Netflix, right? That's yeah. the plan. Yeah. Is it in production yet or not yet? I I think it is, just because there's been small things that have been leaked. Like uh, fans like me are like, well, what is this going to be about? There's so many universes. Are they just going to make a universe? But right. on IMDb, it actually says this is a strict adaptation of the first Gundam. Oh, okay. Which Were they would be amazing. Take because, a space cruiser and send it to Earth and all that shit? Yeah, like, yeah, showing the colony drop, showing... But you know what? It gets... We could... I'm going to move on because we could talk yeah, about... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 you've, I'll, I'll, here's what I'll say. If the yeah. goal is to get people watching interested, I mean, I can tell you, I'm like, I've seen it peripherally enough that I'm like, yeah, now that you're talking about it, I'm like, yeah, let me, let me give that uh, let me give that a try. And I wonder... Uh, you know, I mean, some of the Netflix stuff, people say the new Ultraman on Netflix is excellent. I haven't seen it, but um, I've heard I, that I haven't either. And so oh, they're putting a lot of effort into that shit. So hopefully they'll give this guy enough money and time to make something good. I think so. It's been so long. But also this fall will be a Unreal 5, Unreal Engine 5 Gundam show, actually. Totally forgot. Yeah, that's going to be- All done in Unreal Engine? All done in Unreal Engine okay. 5. It's the first one made by a Western- sort of crew and it's not japanese made but there's a trailer for it it looks badass um one of the games that yeah. we were kicking around before we shut bartlett jones down my last game company was basically twisted metal with superheroes right so we wanted to do like you know um flying and all this kind of you know and i was looking at a number of the gundam multiplayer games because i know that they are oh yeah you know, there, there, there's some really interesting techniques in there, and there's a lot of people who really vibe with them. But honestly, okay. I could never get my head around. So, are you talking about were. the Gundam Battle Operation games? Yeah, it's an online PS4, PS5. Yes, game. those. It's it's amazing how good the game is, but it's super hard, and not a lot of people play. But mm. the way the gotcha system works allows Bandai to get a lot of money from it. So right. that's how they're able to keep it going. But it's actually it's a game that wouldn't exist. Uh, it's just because it is so hard but it's so fun and rewarding it, it it's a if souls like it. It, oh okay in, in a way. but it's cool. multiplayer so, so it's, okay so your your gundam channel does well it's still yeah. going i assume yeah mm -hmm. okay and then you're like fuck it i've learned enough and my my uh, consulting channel's doing well let me go back to blue gamer so on the consulting channel i have to ask because i'm a guy who's consulting trying to build channel? 
aren't you a coach? You said you were oh, coaching people for YouTube and it's yeah. 7,000 right now. Yeah, but I don't have a channel. For oh, that. you're just a guy who takes phone I, calls or something. I was helping a channel that. Oh, was, I thought you said, didn't you say that you did the last three years you were doing like you, you were teaching people how to build social media and all that? Oh, well, um, didn't well you, I kinda, just, you literally said that unless I'm having a stroke and I might I mean, be. I, I actually did digital marketing for a while. So okay, my, I'm I, having I, a stroke. Let me go deal with that. No. <laughs> Or it's I one of these things you do, and I love it, where you just. Oh, yeah. You got to meditate, Dude, baby. Yeah, I meditate. I went on a 10-day silent meditation. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. I, 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 I don't have that in me. I mean, I. I didn't think I, I did. Where did you go? It, actually, I live in uh, North Texas. There's a place just an hour away from me about that. Okay. Yeah, it was awesome. Um, um, that, I yeah, miss I my mean, family so much. Oh, sure. Oh. Yeah, but even that's good stuff to work through, right? It's yeah. just like. You know, I mean, the, the meditation stuff, man. It, why do I think you said you did it? I'm going to check this afterwards and I'm going to clip it if you fucking said it. Now you're like, no, remember, you fucking said, well, what is, yeah. what is it 7,000 right now? Blue Gamer? Oh, Gundam Explained. The, my okay, that's at 7,000. And yeah. then you walked away and you said you did something because you have a family. Oh, so that was originally when I did Blue Gamer, and I was like, this isn't really doing anything. I really need to focus on my career, and I moved from digital marketing to get into IT, so right now I do. Oh, okay, so yeah. that's why Gundam was created. Yeah, exactly. That, okay. I, was, I wanted to get my juices flowing again because- Okay, I, understood. I'm part of everything, and this is what I want the next subject to be, is like, if I'm 40, right, and I love- yeah. and, well, we'll get to it. I keep jumping ahead. I want to go back to meditation first, but keep oh, going. Yeah. It's, your, it's your show. It's your show. No, I well, okay. So, so real quick. Tell people the value. Oh, the a lot of people yeah. don't get it. I know it's weird. I didn't get it at first. The only reason I started meditating a whole lot was because there were people I would find online when I was trying to get healthier, uh, health, healthier lifestyle. I noticed people would meditate. I'm like, I'll try it. There is like, in what helped was this app called Headspace. Mm -hmm. Maybe you've heard of it. And I just heard said, of it. Okay, I haven't used it, but I've heard of it. I'll just go through all the things. After going through all the programs, it's almost like it became a habit. And then I was like, I actually don't like to listen. It got to a point where I'd need complete silence. Yeah. And then I started, I would say it was about maybe six months. I forget how long. It was. I was working at Microsoft at the time, and they had a room for that. So I was able to just go oh, in. Oh, neat. And, yeah. Okay. Um, but um, this is kind of related to, to the Gundam stuff because after the meditation, and I would say maybe psychedelics, I started being more open to things. And one is anime. Yeah, I saw that you were talking about that earlier. Oh, yeah. oh I started reading it last night. It's excellent. It's excellent. Uh, I cannot wait for well, my Did you Have you done the DMT? I haven't done that. But okay. I'm in Texas, so I will say if I could, I would do shrooms with a shaman. Oh, yeah. And learn a whole lot from that. I, it's possible that my brain can. Wait, think, you have done shrooms with the shaman? Well, or you may have that may have crossed your path as an awareness thing because you're in Texas. Well, I'm because I'm in Texas. I'm trying not to, you know, give too many details just in case. Maybe that doesn't if matter. you had to, uh, uh, every day for five years, uh, Kiss Marco Rubio on the mouth passionately, but after five, because he's your senator, right? Yeah, I think so. After, but I hate him. I despise this man. Um, after five years, I then Cruz, they would. Maybe then. No, but anyway, no. Who's on. the one in Florida? Wait, Ted Cruz is the who's your yeah. who's your senator? Marco Rubio is Florida, Florida. Ted Cruz is yeah, yeah. Okay, that's what I meant. Ted Cruz. Okay, even worse. You have to kiss him passionately on the mouth, but in five years you'll get legal mushrooms and psychedelics in Texas. Would you do it, Adam Blue? Would you do it? Well, yes, because it would be for the best of everyone in the state. You're a very nice human. I would never. That may, I would fucking. You know what I would do? I would do like uh, Duke Leto in Dune, and I would have a little thing in my tooth, and when I got close to my... Oh, yeah. 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 No, that's... Yeah. I'm not saying anything, FBI. I would never kill anybody unless they attack me first, but if I was Duke Leto, God damn but it, Adam Blue, you stay. don't have ADD. This must be nice for you. No, What's no. I like to be able I to stay do. straight I focused? I do. Yeah? Because everyone on the internet tells me I do. When I hear, when I listen to people on Twitter, they're like, oh, I have this because of this. I'm like, wait a minute, that's me. But I haven't really gone to check. But anyway, so movies, because this a lot of this ties to movies. So if I remember correctly, didn't you say you went to USC? Mm -hmm. well, and, and, and so this was right after high school, right? 
Like, oh yeah, I I had coveted going to USC since I was about eight years old, and I read in Reader's Digest that George Lucas went to USC Film School, ah. and I wanted to be the next Spielberg, the next Lucas. I was. So those are your yeah. main favorite directors. Yeah. Any others? <sighs> Yes, in real life, but I had a, no, I'm not joking, I'm not being self-deprecating. I had an unhealthy fixation on these guys. I don't mean like a oh. parasocial relationship, like I thought I knew them, but I I had amplified and I had put them up on a pedestal, I think, because I had such a crazy childhood that I just, in my mind, I was like, that is the escape. And so they really were kind of not human to me the way I thought of them. I'm not saying I thought they were magic, but you know, I use that as a way to kind of get out of a, a kind of wonderfully loving, but absolutely chaotic and crazy home when I was a kid. Right. So, you know, so unfortunately I missed out, I mean, on so much that I had to catch up on later, which mostly I have. Whereas like, you know, back then I would, I was, maybe it's one of the reasons I push back on a lot of these hardcore fanboys because I get it, I was there. The, if, if Spielberg released a movie that even he produced, like Young Sherlock Holmes or something, and oh. it didn't top the box office, I was bummed about it. Like I needed people, yeah, I needed people in the zeitgeist to talk about Spielberg's new hit or Luke, because it, it would confirm all of my shit, right? Yeah. And so it was a very personal thing. And, and, and in all that psychological problematic existence, it took me longer to discover I, I was aware of Ridley Scott. I was aware, of oh, course, of Bob Zemeckis. I was aware of uh, Truffaut. I, you know, trailer. all of these guys. Who? Zemeckis had that new movie trailer. Oh, my God. Yeah, here is that yeah. what it's called. Yeah. I mean, Zemeckis is weird now because it almost seems like he only makes a movie when he can play with new tech toys. Exactly. It's like, but, dude, get a fucking script you like. But this does look compelling. Does. So, yeah. uh, but anyway, point being, though, is is I, I was always a movie-obsessed fan um, but it wasn't until I got older, like in my twenties and I sort of let go of all of that need, uh, of what they were providing me mentally that wasn't real that I actually started to discover and warm up to other filmmakers that were like, I mean, the fact that I saw Goodfellas in college when it opened and mm. I wasn't able to be affected by it until i saw it again when i was 40 and i was wow. like oh okay, my I see what you're saying. God. that's very interesting you know? because i'm like ah this is dumb it's too serious where's the fun where's the space you know i need it well it was that's very kind unhealthy. of like anime very unhealthy yeah for me like i was like anime that and then i discovered gundam and i'm like okay maybe anime is not bad um, right and so i've been going well, back you went backwards though i Dude. went i oh. grew into mature things uh, although I have never gotten rid, clearly anybody who talks to me knows I still love the people think they're insulting me when they say, Jeff, you're like a fucking middle school guy with your humor. I'm like, oh, thank you. No, but dude, so that's something I wanted to bring up too as part of this for if, when this is on my channel for people like, who's David Jaffe? But like, I think well, it's cool. I'm running for Congress in your area. Who's David Jaffe? Listen, here's the problem. People say, oh, well, you can't, you know, win if you don't, you know, stake a claim on religion. Here's my claim. I don't give a fuck what you are. I don't care. I want us all to be happy and I want us to take care of each other and I want more social safety nets so people can get sick and get healthy without losing the job. You know what else I want? I want people to be able to say, you know what? I don't get those fucking people down the street. Guess what? They don't get you either. But you know what? We're all living on the same goddamn cock -a duty planet and thus let's just fucking get along, you son of a bitch. What? Vote for me for high school prom king. But That's would you, David Jeff. Would, would you kiss Ted Cruz for all that to happen? Yeah, I would. For oh. that. In, in, joking aside, sure, there's a lot I would do if I could make people happier in that way. I mean, not that. I'm sure there are people that would pay. So sure, Jeff, get an only, OnlyFans, kiss Ted Cruz, I'll pay a thousand bucks a day. But I mean, in terms of if I could sort of magically bring about more kindness. I, I mean, I joke around a lot and I'm a pretty happy guy, but yeah, I am terribly sad about the state of our discourse in this country. It makes me, it just, it, you know, I'm a guy, I grew up in the deep South. A lot yeah. of people did not have my progressive views, um, but I didn't hate them. I have family that, you know, conservative Republicans, I love them to death. Um, again, there's a difference when you start going, 
I want to vote for legislation that hurt people. I want to vote for legislation that makes it impossible for people uh, to get the health care, mental or physical. Th- that's that's a different issue. I won't tolerate right. that. But just because you happen to believe this, that, and the other, and I believe this, that, and the other, as long as we leave each other alone in the places that we should, and the other times we're just humans, I got no beef with anybody. Yeah, no, um, I agree. And, and that's what is cool about your show. There's not many, like... I- you know, I like talk shows, but I like video games and I want the ultimate video game talk show and it doesn't exist. The video game YouTubers that are out there tend to sometimes uh, it's the thing where they will speculate on things in a negative and then just kind of go with that for a long time. It and makes it, a lot of, it makes some money. That's why my YouTube channel is not bigger. Um, well, and I'm not, and, and also maybe it's like, yeah, Jaffe, and you're not talented. I mean, I'm well, cool with no, that. No, no, no. So that's the thing. You are fun. You're able to talk about video games, but also be funny. It's like a Howard Stern, or it's like having the radio show guy that can say comedic things, but then because we're in this video game space and it's a lot of super left people i mean maybe they think that or, make well that make them but you've got a, at least on my channel i get a lot of fucking right-wing people oh no you do i'm just talking about the people and uh, to finish the thought is like that call you out or have oh yeah the oh because they think i'm this yeah it's crazy yeah, and it's i'm like, like no, i'm no, more no. progressive than you bitch trust and me and it's like you you watch a podcast with someone that's known as a comedian and they'll say whatever you know and it's funny but it's like sometimes you'll say the funniest shit and then people will take it seriously and be like, do you guys not get it? The funniest thing, now this is not like a bad thing, but I'll always remember this. You were playing Halo Infinite when it first came out. And there was this scene where John Halo went like really close to the helmet of the other guy. And then you're like, you know what, wouldn't it be great right now if they just took off their helmets and kissed? And then it was never addressed for the rest of the game. You know, I don't know. Did you even- in, in, in my fantasies, it was addressed <laughs> for at least a week. Um, yeah, I don't remember that, but no, but I'm saying little things like that. It, it, it's, it's hilarious. And here's another thing. So just recently, I think I had one of your shows on in the, in the living room because I wanted to be nice and sit with my wife instead of being on my computer. Oh all shit. Time. You showed somebody else the show. what she said? She was lap. She doesn't get video games, but it yep. was just the way you responded to people that would say dumb uh, shit. And then how you would uh, respond. It's just, it's hilarious. Oh, it's, I love that. I love that yeah. people who don't have to love video games enjoy it as well. That's right. That's what I'm saying. That's why the, I love the weird is, is another perfect thing. Oh, I like, love doing that show. And I have some topics I want to bring up on that too. Here good. Shortly. Good. But, I, I think it's it, – so what you do is great, and that's why – another thing, like I like Gundam, want people to get into it. When it comes yeah. to the video game talking space online, I think people should be going to your show. And that's kind of what I'm trying to do with Blue Gamer. It's like bring it back where it's like fun. There's the humor. There is the talking crap, but without it being – hurtful or hateful. personal well the yeah. thing about the, 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 the thing and again i i do think i have a i have a i have a, I have a number of unique perspectives one of which is because i made video games for yeah. 20 years uh, over 20 years and some were huge hits that are still yeah. resonating today and some were mega fucking flops and failures twisted metal people, god of war for people if they're watching this on right. my channel and like then drawn to death calling on cars which you've never heard of because they shat the bed um, and that's how you do. I mean, and I, I drives me batshit, not because it hurts my feelings, but because when people come at me, it's like, well, Jeff, your last game was drawn to death. It's like, yeah, bitch, I swing for the fences. And you know what? Sometimes I miss and sometimes I hit. That's how it works. If you well, only are obsessed with. Get, oh, I'm sorry. I was saying, very rarely do we get a, a game that it's like there's this concept and it's something that everyone knows, like the drawn to death concept. Right. I thought it was, it was even fun. I, yeah, I mean, it was I wasn't, a good game. There were some problems with it, but I mean, but I, I get it. I love the Twisted Metal, actually. Yeah. On PS, the that 2012. Yeah. I loved it too. Super proud of that. I can't believe, and I know they've just announced recently Sony's going to do some PS3 emulation, but for me, that seems like an obvious have that available. I hadn't even thought about that. I would love to see, because uh, I, I, that game... They have to fix one bug or they shouldn't release it. But if they can fix this one bug, um, I, I, I'm so proud of the work the team did and the work I did and, and everything yeah. on that game. And it just, it launched at such a bad time because Sony was about a generation behind Xbox when it came to yeah. network. And there was just stuff we didn't know. And when you don't know something, you don't know, you don't know it. And so it's kind of like, oh shit, you know, all these handshakes that have to happen behind the scenes with the servers in San Diego and the peer to peer aspect of the game and the server aspect of the game. That's not in San Diego. And you know, it's all, we, we, we didn't have any of that 
we didn't have you know we were we were on stage performing the dress rehearsal uh Uh, and and so it uh we really missed the boat on that so i i I had never put that together if but i i think they'll struggle to emulate that uh only because there's so much of that behind the scenes network stuff that is so antiquated now because they've obviously redone playstation network and it's a robust system now and it's great now and all that but back then he was very nascent do you ever emulate games on your PC or like uh, PS3 games? Oh, yeah. Well, emulate means do I just play games on my PC that I don't own that I stream? I mean, yeah, I'll, I'll get like... PS3 games. I'm just saying, have you uh, seen how that works? Because it has... I have heard play. about it, but I've I don't done. know where to go. Do people are like, you got to jump through hoops, and I'm not a tech guy, so I don't know how to I jump through the hoops. Um, it's, it's not too bad now, but there's this emulator called RCPS3. I've heard and of this. Yes. Anyway, uh, there was a Gundam game on there that only came out in Japan, and so the people from the channel or like showing me how I can play that online and you can like easily have your uh, a PSN ID kind of, it's like for the thing, but I was like, wow, it's crazy that it works that easy. So, and it's kind of interesting because I almost feel like Sony really doesn't want to put any money into anything legacy. And maybe that's just, they think that's the best way to they, go. They don't have to. I mean, right now right. there's no, you know, every, you know, it, it, you're only as impressive as you need to be at any given moment, right? Yeah. So, you know, I was there when Sony was releasing the PS3, and I was in the audience when Kaz Harai was like 699 US dollars for the PS3. And you could hear the groans. You could like, what the fuck is this guy thinking? Are you out of your fucking mind? Especially given the games they just showed, you know, the giant enemy crab and all this shit was crap. Um, but see, this is the thing, right? What I was going to say is I, I have two unique perspectives uh, that I think I don't know if it makes my show better, worse, or not, but it does bring uh, a different take to my show. One of them is I worked at Sony and made lots of games for a a large number of years. The other one is this kind of psychological trauma of being a fanboy when I was young. And it doesn't mean that everyone who's a fanboy is going through what I went through, but it's a unique perspective that because I was able to travel through that and come out the other side for myself, you know, I I put a great value on the honesty of uh, the, the discourse about the medium that I love. I don't need Sony to win or Xbox to right. win or Nintendo to win. I don't give a fuck about that. And maybe it's because when I worked at the company, I assure you, they didn't give a fuck about you. It doesn't mean they were mean. They were wonderful to work for, but they're in a business. Yeah. Right. And so all of this, uh, so much of that, oh, we love our fans. Yeah, you love their money, but it's a lot of it's lip service. I'm not saying they're jerks. They're not. Sony right. was delightful. But the point, though, is that people will come at me online and, and, and they'll come at me with their, you know, metaphorical dorky battle armor. Even metaphorical armor for fanboys still looks like they're LARPing. If you're metaphoric, you know, you, if it's metaphorical, you can afford to imagine it like you're fucking a Gundam. But because they're fanboys, it still looks like you can see the cardboard and the tape and all that shit. But anyway, um, they'll come at me and I'm like, dude, I don't care if Sony wins or if it, it means nothing to me. I love the art form. And there are people that have gotten on board with that and they're like, okay, we get where he's coming from. We don't agree with him a lot or all the time, but he clearly loves the medium. He clearly loves games. Yep. And exactly. I play, as I say, I play up and down the budgetary spectrum and I play everything and I love it so I much. I love that. It. It's like when yeah. I'm watching your show, it's like, Oh, I get to have this conversation. I don't normally get to have no, because not no. only is it about any game, but it's also about mechanics. It's also about what is this doing or yeah. what is another game doing that maybe this could be doing. And, yeah. and that has been a big deal, uh, with me too like i love it like it's made it now that i'm you know as i'm getting older it's like i know what i want to play and right it's so another thing too is has uh, that changed have you seen that change for you the kind of stuff you like to play as you get older no i would say that no i think it's it's a lot of the same i mean as maybe genres like oh, i love for, for instance i love castlevania games like yeah which one so the 2d or the like the the no, the, ones, the the okay. one by uh, Igarashi Koji Igarashi okay. from Konami. Konami, like, yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, like the Metroidvania style thing. Got like, it. I love that stuff so much. And but I also love Elden Ring. I think Elden yeah. Ring and Dragon's Dogma Two are like some of the best games I have yeah. ever played. Like, I, it, and it's interesting because a lot of those feel to me like they're Castlevania games. They're just in a three D space um, because there's the whole you when you die, then you have to like start from somewhere else. Um, you will lose the progression, for instance, the yep. bosses. It's like, okay, got to memorize the boss. Um, always leveling up, getting weapons. 
But what Elden Ring and Dragon's Dogma 2 does really well, and Helldivers 2 does this too, is kind of the emergent gameplay where mm -hmm. there's so many systems at play yes. that you never really know what could happen or you could use that to your advantage. I, that's what I. That's why Elden Ring has been, you know, and, and, and I was, you know, I, I'm going to talk about this on my show tomorrow, but I felt last night like I had reconnected with an old friend because I Elden Ring's my favorite game of all time. I've never finished it because I'm I'm I don't I don't take any pride in being a good bad or other gamer. It's never been I don't be like I'm a, you know I'm genuinely like at best an at best an average video game player. And as I get older, my reflexes get slower, right? So I had gotten to a point in the game, pretty late in the game, like I was streaming it last night and one of the members said, holy shit, you're like double. I was like 150 level or something. And he's like, I finished this game at like level 60. I'm like, yeah, no, I grind grinded the fuck out of that game because I knew I couldn't beat it with combat skill. And one of the things I loved about it was that, which is like Bloodborne, which I beat, which was like, oh. okay, I'm going to have to put on some 80s music and just fucking play in the forest for like three days and build my dude up and then go kill the boss. Um, but... I got to a point though where I was just like, I can't do this anymore. I, I got to this guy, uh, the was it the two fat guys? Or oh no, I got I finally got past those guys, the yeah, skin peelers. Uh, the, yeah. the, 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 the uh, this was the guy past the guy on the horse up this bridge up the staircase, and he has a stage two where he transfers into this death Malachi or some such thing. I don't fucking know. Yeah. Uh, anyway, and I was like, okay. Half the time I got close to beating him, the other half I didn't. I didn't know why. It was very lucky for me. And I played it on the stream and they said, dude, your stats are insane. What are you doing? I'm like, I don't know. I don't understand the stats. I just put everything into this and I've respected it 20 times. They're like, look, spec your character out like this and suddenly I'm loving the game again, right? But yeah. that is, and I just love it so much, but that is a game that that is... You talk about all these systems. It's wonderful because of all those systems. And whether or not the game needs, uh, I don't think it needs an easy mode. I do think ideally all games will ultimately have a uh, 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 dynamic difficulty based on really smart yep. AI. So mm -hmm. everybody gets the experience the director intended. But that's a huge different kettle of fish. But what I do think, I would think it would be hard to defend any of from software's um, communication or poor communication when it comes to explaining these systems and how they work because people are like, oh, and, and yeah, I know it's there, the information, but it's like going through a spreadsheet and then going down and clicking the right thing and going, oh, this does this. And even, even simple things like, you know, people who are more into Japan games, like an, uh, Alexa, stop. They understand like an S tier. Well, I don't, I mean, I've oh, yeah. learned over the years that S tier means that's the best, but most 99% of Americans, if you ask them what that is, it's like, is that below an F like failure? Yeah. I don't, you know, it's just a lot of stuff like that. And then they said, Oh, well put it into dexterity because that increases how your, your weapon damage, how hard it hits. And I'm like, Oh, I thought that was strength. Oh no, no, no. That affects, uh, along with poise, if you get knocked down and, how many hit points you lose or whatever. And I'm just like, and then they're like, oh, and the weapon, some weapons scale and some weapons don't, but these weapons scale based on these particular stats. And I'm just like, you know what? Go fuck yourself. That, that if, if that, and, and, and the same thing applies to Bloodborne. I remember in Bloodborne I yeah. played and I got to that, that main hub where the doll is and she becomes a yeah. living. Mm -hmm. like, the hunters. And I'm just like, what am I doing here? And people are like, oh, and I, it's, and, and that's not that the game's too hard. And I know that Miyazaki is like, I want to make it a little op opaque so people have to work together. But there's a point where it's like, dude, I could understand a Kurosawa film in its original Japanese more than I can understand what the fuck I'm supposed to do in your games without help. And that's, I don't think that's good. But anyway, that there's a lot of systems. There's a lot of systems at play. No, I guess it's interesting because I feel like, um, I love the Souls games. But I feel like they can get away with that. It may be just because because we let them. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and, but it and is kind of cool because someone's brought it up. It's like there the community a, aspect that comes with it. Then, because then I you're like, put, hang on, I just put the Beverly Hills nine hundred two one zero theme whenever I get a text message. It was supposed to be a phone call, but now I hear it all the time. No, that that's uh, a good idea. Um, Isn't that no, new movie coming out? I don't know. I just I was Axel like, F. I, I, 
Oh, yeah. yeah, that's not Beverly Hills, but yeah, that's oh, oh wait, no, that's what? Beverly Hills Cop. I was saying Beverly Hills 90210. Oh, okay. Um, that, but that. I, I love them both. Uh, but anyway, no, I mean, you're right. But I see, I think w- what I've been so fascinated about with the discourse of the from software games has been the the, the actual genuine sense of pride um, that a number of gamers, that they're not joking. I kind of thought, are you serious? They really... And again, this is not me saying it like they really like, aren't they stupid? I, I, I'm not disrespecting them. I just didn't think that they really thought that that was a, a thing of pride. I'm just like, it's a game, man. But okay, it does take skill and it does take intelligence, just like chess or anything else. I'm not mocking it. I just, I was so surprised. And the reason I bring that up is 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 when when we talk about how could they keep getting away with making such complex systems i think part of the appeal of those games for the vocal group that promotes them online is that gatekeeping and is that let us just have one thing that's for Mm. us and in that i think they're willing to overlook things that aren't simply difficult and challenging but are genuinely poor design onboarding video game design yeah onboarding that's a good Um, way to put it because i yeah any stats i would put in yeah starting with bloodborne that was the first one i beat the first and then i went back but yeah i didn't know what the fuck and then i would really look up it's like well i want to use this weapon what's the best way i should upgrade it you know um yeah and 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 that's the thing it's it's like um the the level of confusion and the like so last night i had been dealing with this boss for a month and then I gave up with the whole game. Mm-hmm. I was like, I'm not even playing the DLC. Fuck it. And all it took was one guy, hardcore souls guy, awesome Tatum on my channel. Yeah. And he says, he says, just, you know, here, do these stats. Okay. First time I went back in to fight the boss, I got it down within like one hit of death, the whole thing instantly. And then I, I got a little nervous. I'm like, what the fuck is happening? I almost killed him. And then it took like three more times and I killed him. And then I went and I killed the horse that was I was stuck on for a month, the, the guy who guards that boss that I just ran past. And so the point of this is that I'm a relatively smart individual. I'm a relatively educated individual. Bo- and they're both of very different things. But between the two of them, I'm sm- and I've also designed video games yeah. with stats and yeah, level of systems. Uh, yeah. and I'm smart enough to understand, oh, if you put, this into this it increases the ability or decrease you know i get the idea the only thing i was missing is it communicated it poorly and i'm like okay if i'm struggling with that and all it took was somebody to say put the things in the right category i'm it's a problem man it's a real problem and i don't care i don't give a fuck what these fucking fans say they're wrong it's be- and i'll tell you something else here's how we're going to know elden ring was massive elden ring's my favorite game of all time yeah uh massive seller uh my theory or my guess is a lot of people bought it a lot of people shelved it relatively quickly because they got hyped on the hype and the reviews and they got hyped on george martin and and all of that shit and a lot of people who bought it expecting oh i like zelda i'll play this yeah Uh, but it's a grown-up zelda like what the fuck so and you saw today that elden ring or from software came out with a patch because everybody was complaining that And I'm not saying it was too hard. I haven't played it. And I but they kind of made it easier for the to beginners. figure out, I guess, how to upgrade something. Yeah. And, and again, after the guys on my chat explained to me why it actually isn't hard, it's just a mentality you have to come in with. Even that is like, well, where's the line between a designer going, I know this is trolly, but I like that what I do to the community because it's almost like performance art and it leads to a... Uh, almost cultish relationship with our software and going, yeah, but we're spending, you know, $120 million on this fucking thing. Do we really want that many people returning it to the store or to steam when they go, I can't walk five feet without dying. And so I think the fact that they came out with a patch today, uh, is really the first time I've seen them kind of, uh, I don't know what they're doing. I don't know if they're saying we were wrong or, oh, of course it's too hard. We fucked up. Or they're like, yeah, we like it that way, but now we're so much in the big leagues. We can't afford to be making those cult decisions anymore. Although that's what got them to be in the big leagues. So it's kind of a dynamic. And so I wonder if maybe they're seeing the refunds. Uh Uh-huh. And maybe because I think I but even, we don't but we don't know. I mean, that's the thing we always right. have to be clear on. All this is pontificating and bloviating. We have no clue why they did it yet. Maybe they'll never let us know. But 
it sounds stands to reason. And, and one thing I think they had some stats come out that was less than 40% of people got to the point in Elden Ring that they could then do the DLC. Oh, right. Yeah. Even, even to like get that. to the point yeah. where you can activate the DLC, you, there were less than 40% uh, of people who even it's got to that. Yeah. Interesting. Hey, but let me ask you, I forgot if you said, did you like Breath of the Wild? Uh, I loved Tears of the Kingdom. I never finished it. I don't like 3D open world Zelda games. I mean, I like them. Mm. And Tears of the Kingdom is incredibly impressive. I, my mind was blown by the freedom of that It's a completely game. different type of game. Um, I don't even yeah. consider well, that Zelda as much. Only if you've played Zelda uh, uh, Link Between Worlds, which is the official sequel to Link to the Past. Oh, yeah, on the 3DS? Yes, which is probably my favorite Zelda game of all time. Where that you was go the against first the wall. Yes, but that's also the first Zelda game where they said, here's the dungeon, solve them however you want. Every single dungeon can be solved regardless of what items you have. And yeah. so there were multiple, and that was where I first kind of saw them experimenting with what we saw in Breath of the Wild. And then ultimately it just blew up with Tears of the Kingdom, which is just yeah. filled with, I'll try this. Fuck, it worked, right? Yeah. That's brilliant. But I've never liked the pacing uh, of the 3D Zeldas and... I think for Mario, that kind of uh, cipher or that kind of just blank slate of a character, which is Link, works uh, for Mario. But in a game that's competing with Elden Ring and Dragon's Dogma and all of these richer characters and and lore, mm. the Zelda stuff just almost feels like you're watching a, a puppet show. Yeah, and it's it, very it almost like an emptiness where you're almost kind of filling in context for yourself as you're going. And, and I, like, get oh, the, I get, yeah, I get the appeal of that. It's just, yeah. it's not for me and the pacing troubles me, but I love the 2d Zeldas and the new Zelda where you're playing Zelda that they just announced last week. Uh, oh, Echoes yeah. or something. When, Echoes of the wind. Yeah. Some, yeah. Super into that. The, uh, I love yeah. the art style. The mechanic looks really fun, you know, creating echoes and solving puzzles. However you want, depending on what echoes you have, it, it's very cool. Yeah, I agree. And, you know, yeah, speaking of yeah, the, the announcements, I to be honest, I was pretty surprised with Sony and Nintendo's and Microsoft or Xbox's announcements. You know, considering I still feel, and I don't know if you think it's different, the industry is still recovering from COVID in multiple ways. Mm. Not only people not, yo, you don't think so? Uh, there's a point where it's like, okay, we all suffered through COVID. Well, and I'm just I, talking about I, games that might have been in development. Yeah. Oh, you, wait, are you talking about, you're, you're not talking about the development is suffering? What, what part? I thought you meant like just the, the, the cadence of release. Yeah, that's probably part of it too. I bet that affects it. it. It just really seems like the things they announced this year were kind of like more of an expected rather than like, oh, wow, that's amazing. This ge I remember like when Shenmue 2 or no Shenmue or whatever that thing with Sony. Oh, when they did, did yeah, they had Last Guardian, they had yeah, Shenmue, like, you know. Whoa. And, and none of them sold worth a damn, though. So old, and, and the budgets have gone up. Yeah. And so, you know, if you want to see, if you want your mind blown, seriously, it's it's like, I, I say this all the time, people get pissy at me, but whatever, I don't care. I mean, I care because I'm like, I'm not lying to you. I'm not being a dick. So I guess I do care on that way because I'm like, I'm not fighting you on this. It just happens with every medium. The more money that things start to cost, understandably, 99% of the time, the more people have to be cooks in the kitchen to sign off on those huge investments. And you're going to get less chance taking. You're going to get things that have to travel outside of the home territory, which means they have to make things a little dumber in order, not because the other territories aren't as smart, but because translation and everything. Yeah, trying to you broaden want, that. Yeah, you yeah. want you, not just sort of uh, conceptually broaden it, but also just language, you know, to, to release a... Uh, uh, a David Mamet movie like uh, Glengarry Glen, Glen Ross in China probably oh, yeah. is like, what are they, you know, what? Um, so part of it's that, but so if you really want to play the stuff that is like, oh my God, that's fucking cool. That exists in spades. You're just going to have to go look for it on the double A in the indie space. But a lot of gamers that came up with Sony and their beautiful production value, they're just not acclimated to that. And they find that off putting. And I respect that. But that's how it's going to be, just like movie aficionados and stuff. It's like, if you love movies, yeah. that's great. But I'm sorry, you're not going to get your terms of endearments of the 80s, or you're not going to get your ordinary people, or you're not going to get the conversation from the 70s with Gene Hackman from Coppola anymore in the multiplex. You need to subscribe to Hulu yeah. or Netflix or whoever, or at any given time, whoever's investing in these kind of smaller, more adult films. 
not because they're not good, but because the 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 worm is turned and the the audience is adjusted and the budgets have gone up for the stuff that goes in theaters. And that's something I wanted to bring up because both movies and video games, I wonder how much. And I don't know if this is true, and I'm just guessing. How yeah. much is that maybe a, a kind of money laundering where it's like, okay, we've got a number of these producers on a game or a movie, and they're like, well, let's make the budget $200 million. And it's like sometimes there's examples where does something really need that budget, like the Godzilla from Japan that came out recently. Or, oh, it's such a great movie. Yeah, yeah, I know. And it's even video games. I'll see indie games that come out that just have this layer of, of, of um, Oh, you're saying the Godzilla movie is an example of not needing that big of a budget to be great. Yeah, in multiple I ways. See. Visually, story, acting, and it was from another country, but I was still enthralled with Oh, yeah. It was story. delightful. And so I almost feel like some because I follow movies, we, you know, talk like I'm really into filmmaking, but movies and video games, and it seems like that same thing. When it comes to the big production houses, they spend a lot, and then they're like, oh, we didn't make money. I don't think it's money laundering, although I'm sure in some cases it is, but I think more than that, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's a bizarre type of risk aversion, right? So if we can, you know, there's stuff that, that, that you can see if we hire, even though, and I got into a big argument about this with somebody on my stream a few months ago that, that, you know, and, and I'm not saying anything like, Oh, Jaffe, that's really interesting. It's like, Anybody who talks film knows this, but this guy didn't agree with me that the days of the movie star are over, you yeah. know, and, and at least compared to what I came up with and a little bit of what you came up with. Oh. To me, yeah. I remember going to Westwood uh, in, in college, and that was when all the theaters were in Westwood by UCLA, and all it took was Julia Roberts to be in a movie. It didn't matter. It didn't have to be Pretty Woman. It did, you know, she could be in a movie like Sleeping with the Enemy or... or uh, 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 this love story thing where Campbell Scott was his first movie and he was dying, whatever. And lines would be around the block because it was Julia fucking Roberts. That yeah. does not exist anymore, right? right? It, same thing with like Jackie Chan. Like, oh yeah, and they would import any of his movies because there was an audience. I, and I actually met him. One yeah. of the greatest moments of my life. Nice. I guy. shook his hand in a Target. How about that? Now uh, he happened to be is he doing, doing a book signing. But, oh, okay. Know. I was going to say, I mean, I like Target. One of the most relaxing things is to go to a Target Great Land because they're huge and no one's ever in them like when I go. Oh, And it's yeah. just so relaxing just to walk. and. Oh, yeah. That's something we know. do. Yeah, Super Target. We go yeah. just kind of walk around. Um, yeah. But and just also. But, 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 but so Jackie, oh. yeah, Jackie, Jackie Chan was one of them. But I mean, I, yeah. I mean the one I mean, he opened to a niche, but I mean like a Tom Cruise back in the day or a Will Smith back in the nineties, right. early two thousands. It was, so my point is that there, it's yeah. not just the, it's not just the director fees, or the actor fees. Uh, it's the effects. It's the license yeah. fees. It's, it's a gajillion things, the production value, because I think they're hoping one of these things hopefully will be the magnet that brings people in. Um, and I think with games too, and I think we are seeing it flip Change. a little bit yeah. because I, I saw I a survey so. that came out from game developer magazine or gamma sutra whatever they're called now um and they said that they they asked game developers what their top 10 problems with the industry was and number three at 41 percent, they said the budgets are too high and these are the people that get paid which is why the budgets are really high but even they're recognizing you know do we really need you know all of this stuff and to me the idea i bring up a lot on my stream and it's like Anybody watching this from my stream is probably like, Jesus, Jeffy, we've heard it. I know. But it's such a great example is when about four years ago, five years ago, whatever, Naughty Dog put out a video on the PlayStation blog about their new procedural animation where you were able to kind of run around and instead of just playing a canned animation or picking between three animations when Joel slams into the wall because he doesn't turn the stick fast enough there's now this much deeper procedural animation between like 50 mocap sessions that will tween between four of them oh, yeah. based on the physics of the way the guy, and, it, and it's just like, you look at that and you go, that's just tech porn at this point. It's yeah. not that it's not impressive. It's not that if you're making an engine like unreal five, Hey, we should put that in there, of course, to compete with Unity or whatever. But as a single title where the budget goes to that, and that's just one example, but this, the triple a is filled yeah. with that. Um, I think, you know, it's wasteful because not, look at the look at what the audience plays. They don't care. Roblox. There are some people that care, but even Insomniac came out and said in their leaks, the numbers that we spent on Spider-Man 2 compared to Spider-Man 1 were so high. 
and we don't think most people saw a big enough jump to merit that jump in money. So yeah, I think I it's nice to see the change, but it's it's slow coming and it's it's vulgar it, the amount they spend. Yeah, so. but, and at the same time, it's crazy the development tools anyone could have. So yeah, my youngest right. is eleven, mm -hmm. and even before he turned eleven, he was already making VR stuff for yeah. his meta quest. Like he would just open up unity and he's just researching on YouTube. Okay. How do I make, and then this? he side loads it into the meta yeah. quest and he's made his own VR world. And then it's, you know, amazing. so, you know, I was saying how, like, I've always wanted to be a filmmaker, but what am I actually doing to do that? You know, like, I don't know, but I love video games. So another thing is there's this guy, midnight hatter. It's another YouTube channel. We, I actually stream on his on Wednesdays. He streams on my Gundam on Thursdays, Okay, but, we are really into video games at this level. And so we've been working on something in, in the background and it's and I've learned how just going through this process, how difficult it is. Like, mm. it, it, I mean, you've said it plenty of times, but actually seeing it because there's so much time spent on the smallest thing because it just needs to feel right. So it's like, yeah. how do we figure this out? And, and I don't want to give too much away, but it's it, the, the neat idea was take Castlevania, but what mm -hmm. if the whip is a utility more than just to hit enemies. Right. So swinging and all Lots carrying of stuff. and stuff. I'm trying to, I'm trying, we're trying to like implement that emergent gameplay. Cool. Excellent. And it's pretty cool. And what was really cool. And what about are you building it in? What engine? Unity. Unity. Cool. Yeah. And, and what, what's another cool thing about it is, you know, we're thinking about, we want to make this where it's something we, we can just publish to say, Hey, we published something and not right. scope creep to death. And one thing uh, that came out of this is I also like, producing music i've recorded some things in the past but i've never really took it seriously even for my own channels i don't make my own music but like knowing seeing how far this game was like the buddy i work with what he was doing like i got way into the music production started making cool. music and i'm like i can see this because music to me is a big deal i feel like that's part of the atmosphere a lot oh, of yeah. times oh yeah it depends on the game but sure absolutely yeah absolutely and um so yeah, you know that's that's very interesting. Do you uh, do you ever listen to like just video game music? Um, only the stuff that is um, into like, I metal. Mean, I get it. No, yeah. Well, <laughs> good stuff. The, the, so the st I listen to when I do put on music to work to, and it's not like pop music or whatever. I will, and it's video game music. It's usually if it sounds chip tuny. Yeah. Like the only soundtrack I've listened to that's just a soundtrack that you wouldn't know if it was from a game. I think the Starfield soundtrack is just insanely good um, oh, from that from that game. But it yeah. sounds like a movie soundtrack. A cinematic it doesn't, experience, yeah. yeah. So, but in terms of just like, you know, there definitely have been a handful of games through the years that are cinematic soundtracks and games that I go, I probably would like that on its own. But I don't, usually if I'm listening to a, and I haven't listened to sort of John Williams, James Horner, uh, 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 Hans, I, Hans Zimmer stuff. I, I used to listen to that all the time to work. Um, 13th but, Warrior? It was, yeah. was that James Horner? That was a great uh, That was John what? McTiernan directed it. I don't know yeah. who, who the... I think it was James Horner. Yeah. yeah, but you know, um, but I, I swear I used to listen to that stuff to work all the time, but I, I just, I don't anymore, but I love it. I mean, I respect the shit out of it. It's amazing. Yeah, and so, and, okay, so I want to go back to the filmmaking real quick. So when you were going to USC, was it in your mind that you got to figure out how to make a movie? Oh yeah, I mean, to, not not through USC though. I made yeah, movies just somehow. From just the, somehow. I, yeah, I made movies all... when I was a kid. I mean, when I was like eight, I was oh, making yeah. my first movies. Right, they were yeah. terrible, but I was making yeah. them. Um, and uh, I never got into the film school. Right, I worked at the film school, but my grades weren't good enough. And you know, again, I I was obsessed with Spielberg and stuff. So while a lot of kids, even though I got into USC, a lot of kids wrote their essays to get into film school about, oh, I'm, you know, uh, this refugee that we came over from, you know, uh, Guatemala and my mom worked two jobs and I want to make movies about that culture. You know, that's the stuff a liberal arts college that cost what USC cost was vibing on. I was like, here's how I want to improve the Hollywood car chase, right? That was my essay. They had no time for me because you're like, you're hmm. just a you know, you just want to be a cog in the wheel. I'm like, no, I want to own the fucking wheel, but I still want to make commercial movies anyway. So, but in that time though, I, yeah, I worked at SC, uh, at the cinema school. So I had the keys. Um, and so I made movies on a lot of their facilities. I, I, a lot of the students got pissed at me, but I loved it. I was a freshman and I made a movie and we were shooting, uh, I gotten the keys and just 
commandeered a, a, a classroom and a soundstage that they use. But it was late. Nobody was using it, so nobody cared. Um, and Spielberg and Lucas were on campus at some fundraiser. And we took a break, and we went over and said, hey, you know, let's go meet Spielberg and Lucas and ask them. And we met them, and they were nice. And I was just like, hey, we're shooting a movie where your limo is parked, because it was parked by the cinema school. On your way back, could you stop by? you know, and say hey to the crew and cast and it would be cool. And they, lo and behold, they did. And so the next day, or that was a Saturday, so Monday, when the cinema school got wind of it, it was like, first off, he's not even in the cinema school. Why is he using our shit? And why does he get to meet Spielberg and Lucas, right? So it was uh, awesome. So much fun. You did the thing. Um, I mean, but that's what I'm saying. So I, I was going to do it by hook or by crook. It didn't, I didn't need yeah. a, a piece of paper saying you're in the film school to make films. Yeah. Um, but again, not because I'm some you know, because I was so mentally desperate to get that golden ring that in my mind I had created to mean more than it really was that on one hand, you can applaud the nobility and the drive and the work ethic, but know that like a lot of people who are successful in certain things where they apply that kind of work ethic, a lot of that work ethic and, and stuff comes from a place that's not very healthy. And uh, usually when you get healthy, I do think when people worry about, oh, I'm going, you know, I'm a writer and I'm a comedian or I'm this and I'm going to go to therapy and yeah, it might make me happier, but it's going to ruin my, it's, it might. Yeah. Because a lot of people's creativity comes out of their pain. Uh, yeah, that's a good point. That's something I've always struggled with because I feel like I've always wanted to be creative, but I've had a relatively easy life, you know, and I go, go over to Gaza for a few weeks. You yeah. Come back, that's, ready that's to make all. a, make an Oscar winner. Well, so, so then did you, when you were transitioning to gaming and I guess that started with like QA at Sony or was there, I, I had sold actually a couple of TV shows to oh, uh, one to universal and one to yeah. new line television at the, which is now part of Warner brothers. And I was waiting for those to take off. They never did. And in that I needed a job. So I, just looking for something. But did you feel like a connective tissue and creative freedom in a way? I mean, I well, know. Well, yes, but okay. not because that's what was offered in the job. I just needed to pay the rent and I'm like, oh, okay, I need okay. something. And this looks like a lot of fun. And I, I mean, I was sending resumes out to that. I sent a resume out to be a, a receptionist at the uh, USC dental school, just anything oh, that was anything. hiring. Wow. But they called me and I got the job and I, I think, like I said, I don't think I, I, the first, I remember I had been at Sony for a couple of years and I was home in my apartment in LA. And I remember that was the first time I had this, um, voice in my head that was just like, I think you're in the right place. Like, I think oh, you're going to wow. do cool. something meaningful in this space, you know? Um, and I've had that voice about four times, <clears throat> four times in my life. And it's been kind of, I'm not a guy that's, pr I understand success bias. I understand, um, yeah. you know, that people will embellish stories, not just to people, to themselves, but to people they tell them to. I'm always very careful uh, when I talk about that to not act as if that's a normal thing for me or, hey, if you hear a voice, just go for it. It's the universe. Oh, right. I, I don't mm -hmm. fucking know. And have there been voices I've heard that because they didn't work out, I've forgotten probably right i don't know but i can tell you though that that there were four times in my life where i the voice was loud as it could be and that was one of them but when i first got there i was just like oh these guys do creative work and all that those tools are around me well i'm here nine to five fuck it if i work really hard i'll just use their shit and i'll be spielberg of video games i just needed yeah, that, that out is. right it was it had nothing to do with the medium it could have been uh, uh, animated flip books. It's like, oh, everybody, I gotta, I gotta right. be the yeah. best at making animated flip books on the history book. And I don't fucking know. I mean, that's what like me doing YouTube is. It's a way for me to be creative because I really don't know how to make a movie. I mean, I, yeah, again, I well, made it when I, mean, I was it's easy to young. make a movie. Yeah, just it's like easy. it's easy for your son to make a, a VR, a thing. VR I mean, game. Why anybody don't I can make a movie? The question is, can you make a good movie? Yeah. Or, and I think are you willing to take the hits for the first, for the next 15 years while your movies suck or 10 years I'll or whatever? Just Ted Cruz. I can make it happen. <laughs> okay. But no, no, that is interesting because I think a lot of times it's like I see something and how much of that is, oh, I can do that too because it was so exciting. But I really do think as with video games, I'm picky about the movies I watch. Sometimes I look at, okay, mm. who's the director? Who's producing it? 
what is it about? Is it, what's going on? Like, I haven't watched a lot of the latest Marvel movies just because over some time it's kind of like, eh, you know, that's probably cool for some people, but yeah. there's something I want out of it. And and so, like, with this Gundam live action movie apparently happening, like, oh, some streams we have, we're just sitting there thinking, oh, what's the best way to to right. do this? And Robert Meyer Burnett, who I brought up to you before, I'm trying to get you guys in for an interview, but like. Robert Meyer Burnett does a great job of talking about like verisimilitude in in cinema. Oh, Burnett work, yeah. I I know I know uh, I'm I'm buddies with the guy who's real close with him and uh, Dave Parker and what yeah, was it? Free Enterprise was yeah. his movie. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I I I ran uh, adjacent to that group when I was living in LA, and my oh. buddy's the connective tissue. But uh, oh, yeah, cool. I watch his stuff sometimes. He's, yeah, because really I hear cool stories guy. from him too about like he was a. Uh, assistant on Army of Darkness, which I love yeah. that movie. Uh, which, by the way, I met Bruce Campbell twice. Nice. I know I, Bruce Campbell and Jackie Chan. Like those it, are the geek. The geek and now you. Yeah, yeah. No. But, no. Uh, yeah. The the uh, Burnett is. I'm trying to think because he he's also kind of in that John Capia Campna group. He'll right? sometimes be on John Campia show. Yeah. Right. Do you ever listen to Backstory, the magazine, the screenwriter magazine? No, uh, it's, oh, it's, it's, a, it's a podcast, but it's also oh. Backstories Magazine. My buddy uh, who I went to school with at USC is editor in chief, but he has a podcast for years now where he brings on the writers of all the biggest movies and they just talk about how they got into the business and their structure of how they write and the structure of the certain movie they're talking about. And it's incredibly entertaining, but it's also incredibly valuable if you are considering being a filmmaker. So I highly recommend it. Yeah, I, I feel like it's something that will happen eventually. I'm just constantly working on this stuff. But, you know, in, um, to kind of go back to the filmmaking thing, I think that's what's yeah. really cool about God of War when that came yeah. out. Because that seemed like it was making a, a game cinematic without without pulling you away from the controller, I guess is the best way to put it. Like, yeah. it, 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 Because I think, and it's since then that Sony, and I don't know if it's because of God of War, but Sony kind of doubled down on that kind of cinematic approach. God of War, I think, was certainly one of the the the, cl the the inaugural class that really made it clear to a certain type of game publisher creator that that was a viable path. Absolutely. I mean, it wasn't yeah. just God of War. I mean, I think Deus Ex, God of War, Resident yeah. Evil 4 had come out the same year. Oh, yeah. Um, but, but certainly I, I'll, I'll, along with the team, take the, the flowers for being one of the handful of games that really did, I think, uh, usher that in for good and for bad. I think Sony leans on it way too much now. Yeah, they do. Um, uh, like as a huge God of War fan, yeah. the, the, those new ones just, you know, it's, it's, it's the pacing. I'm just not yeah. using the, the controller not a lot. Good. Yeah. You know, I need to do things with my hands. Um, otherwise watch a movie, but that's yeah. it. Yeah, I know. Um, you know what? So uh, we've been talking for a while. I don't know how much more time you have. I don't know what time is it. It's, uh, well, here in Texas, 630. So whatever, two hours. 430. Ah, I got 30 minutes. You okay. Talk for cool. 30 more minutes. Let's do some weird. I love the weird stuff. Yes. Um, so um, you, do you remember the other day you were showing that UFO? It was the, the sphere that had like, it looked like windows on it. Yes. That people were saying is a weather balloon. Right. So. There's um, an, a video. I don't, and I just so you guys are clear because they're like, why are we? Oh. I do a show once a week on usually Saturdays, sometimes Sundays called I Love the Weird, also on my channel. Um, and that's where we delve into my other passion, which is UFOs and weird brain science and metaphysics, just metaphysics anything. and religion that's yeah. weird. You know, all religions God. weird to me, but you know, God, you know, I, I just love all that stuff. Yeah. So that's kind of yeah. yeah. what we're talking And, and last week there was a picture that i i think was shot in texas i think it was from texas but i don't know where uh, yeah, it was, i don't remember have one of the clearest the images of what people say is has been you can't authenticate it but they've said right. there's no trickery going on here as far as experts can tell but i don't but know have you true. have you seen the video i have not okay because the video and i tried to look for it to pr show you uh, but if you watch it and you have it clear and you're kind of focused you yeah. can see what looks like a little like thing pop out and move around okay but it does so like at a, like a velocity like, like, like a penis yeah just like that exactly no it's like an antenna almost like it's but what when you look at it real closely it's moving really fast as if there's nothing working against its movement okay so you think what you think it's the real deal or it's definitely not a weather balloon 
It's it's something you know. What my thought, if I was, I think any UFO we see is just something that is here. I, well, yeah, and I think it's you. You mean something that is man made that we have put up there, either man made or, or it's by a, a civilization that's been around for a while, but they live underwater because it's safer. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I don't I don't have a dog in the fight other than I just think the fight is fun. Like yeah, I, I exactly. I'm I'm yeah. fascinated. I'm curious. It doesn't matter to me what it is. Um, what even if it's the most benign, if if what the Air Force pilots say, uh, they saw this thing moving. Like if you go back to like Tic Tac video and all that, but it's yeah. it's all of them or a lot of them. Even if all of it is the most boring, benign answer, which is, oh, yeah, that's DARPA technology that we know what's going on, but we can't talk about it. Just like, you know, I was a kid of the 80s and there was the stealth bomber that we all kind of oh. knew was happening. But no, they, oh, there's, like, there's no stealth bomber. You know, there's, it's like, yeah, sure. But in, and obviously there is, right? And there the other day, I don't know if you saw the Google photo of the manta ray, which is like this underwater drone submersible um, that the military has. It looks like a giant manta ray and Google Maps caught it. And then the government went in and either, I don't think they can force them. I don't, I don't know what the relationship is there. Yeah. Because you kind of get into First Amendment issues or whatever. But all I can know now, all I can tell you now is it's no longer there and it has been filled in with boats. So if you just look like, if you look up Google manta ray google maps photo you'll see the before and after and the okay. before is it's kind of in in the dock and then now it's been replaced with boats so but anyway the point is even That's if it's cool. that most benign boring thing which is oh yeah it's military if we have actually invented technology that allows us to in the most benign way simply move that quickly and in the most dramatic but still benign way fold space and time so that we can actually move through dimensions in order to get places faster um both of those will revolutionize the world i mean can yeah. you imagine being able to live in you know off the grid in the woods but go to work in new york city nine to five and it takes you 10 seconds to get there i mean well, also if, a, if an alien from another planet is smart enough i don't think they're going to take their time to fly Oh to yeah, Earth. unless they really do fly super fast. But now, even if they did, they, they wouldn't be, uh, or they wouldn't be physical beings because they would just tear up. Yeah, I mean, it, well, if they went light speed, they could, right? You, you're not going to die if you go light speed if you're in the vehicle that's moving at light speed, will you? I don't know. We should try it. Yeah, well, let's see what I can do. <laughs> but but certainly, folding space time, you wouldn't. But regardless of what it is, that's interesting. You know, it is. I I, I I think I don't. I've never seen a ghost. Um, do I think consciousness survives this experience? Mm. I think enough meditation and maybe you've experienced this as well, will let you recognize, even though you have to also give into the idea that it could also just be a thought you're having that you're attributing to something higher. Um, but if you get into some really, uh, deep meditations where you sort of, I guess on my chat the other day, somebody called it ego death, but when you kind of lose right. your sense of self, Exactly. And you just are you it, 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 to me. It's like, I feel like I'm connected with everyone. That's how it feels. I me. don't even feel it, it does feel that way when you come back from it and you try to explain it. But I think when you are experiencing it, there is no sense of thought. It just is true. Um, yeah. And so I think that might survive this um, because that may be all there is anyway, but but the point is, I love exploring it. That's why, again, the, this book was recommended to me. And I'm just like, the more I hear about the psychedelics and the more I hear about certain as, certain type of psychedelics, you know, um, both from a medical standpoint, like ketamine to treat depression. Right. I know people who are on that, that it's been a lifesaver for, or just people who want to explore. And some things I've experienced when I've been insanely medicated, um, I think there's a neat adventure to be had there. Uh, if you're into that kind of spiritual exploration. So I love all that stuff. Definitely. And AKA, I, I love the weird Saturdays, yeah. five o'clock California time. Where can you see it right here? Well, or there on <laughs> David Jaffe games. Link below, YouTube. I guess. Oh, but yeah. no, what's uh, yeah interesting about that is actually, let me, I can present, can't I? You should be able to. Let yeah, me, let uh, me do something real quick. Let me go out quick. of full screen here. Um, all right, so I am showing, um, do you see it? UnchartedX.com or YouTube. When I came to this channel, to this screen, sorry, 
Uh, I happen to glance at the chat because I have it on full screen. We have a guy named Midnight Hater. Oh, Midnight Hater. Adam Hatter. Hater. Hatter. 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 Hatter, yeah. Whatever, whatever your fucking name is, pal. He drops super chat. Thank you, buddy. He says, Adam's one of the most genuine guys on YouTube. Love talking Gundam and gaming with him. Thanks for having him on. Absolutely, Midnight Hatter. That's cool. Great yeah. guy. Great channel. Check him out. Game dev. Oh, he is. Oh, what yeah. has he worked on? Do I know him or what I know is stuff? No, well, actually, he was the one I was mentioning before. Oh, Scooby that you're working Heather. with. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so this is what you're sharing right now, unchartedx.com. Yeah, so this is interesting. I love following things about ancient history that's not explained. Like, yeah. I love the idea that there, there might not be an answer. But the biggest smoking gun for evidence of an advanced ancient civilization, we don't even have to say aliens. You mean like, on Earth? On Earth. Or in general? On Earth. Okay. Yeah. Is these precision, what look like vases, so there's multiple videos about this. These vases were found in a 15,000-year-old burial in Egypt, but um, they have precision where all around them, it's they're carved perfectly within a thousandth of an inch. I think that's what it is. And it's to be done that way today with machines would be super expensive. But the other part that can't be explained is there's like these little uh, handles that are uh, to the I right and left of them. And if you would you would think you would make this on a lathe, something that's spinning it, but then you wouldn't be able to do that. So really it's they have experts and he has videos of experts with like laser machining to to research and look at it or study it. And it's unexplained how that could be fifteen thousand years old. Like even today it would be hard to uh, to put together. So that to me is a very fascinating thing. I can send you this link if you want to check out the videos. Where, but where, where, where these were found? Where in a cave? In, in Egypt, in a burial that had. Uh, I want to say it might have had uh, uh, some other bodies with it, but it had organic material that they were able to date back to fifteen thousand years ago. So what are they? They're, they're suggesting options would be that there was a civilization that is no more that had well, advanced capabilities. Yes, mainstream um, says that. No, they were just done by hand, but there's no chisel marks. The precision's impossible. Um, how, how many of them are there? I want to say there's like 40,000 of them. Oh, okay. So it's not so, just a handful right? in this burial chamber. Right. And and the other thing, too, is um, th there's ideas floating around. I guess, you know, nothing is uh, for sur uh, certain. But these weren't jars to, like, hold things or water. The idea is they're similar to what's used on transformers. These like these ceramic caps that would be on top of a... An electric transformer and they're thinking okay. that could be a way to harness electricity there's a lot of potential speculation that electricity was a, a widely used thing in ancient times but uh well i never trusted that ben franklin i knew he was ripping somebody off <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he was um, pretending he discovered something yeah um i mean it's interesting i you know yeah. I'm always, I'm not, I, I don't like people that are skeptical as a part of their personality trait. Like I'm skeptical only because I want to believe so much that in, in that I, 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 I refuse to be taken for a ride because I'm too busy looking for the real thing. And I'm not saying this is that, but like, I know, and I have no, I have no knowledge of this at all. So I, I can't speak to it at all, but sure. it just reminds me of that uh, Netflix show that was going around. I know Joe Rogan talked yeah. about it. Uh, Graham Hancock's. Uh, yeah. And a lot of people yeah. were like, see, see, and I went and I'm like, Oh, I watched the first episode. I'm like, that's pretty compelling. And then I went and, Inevitably, it's like, here's all the ways that, that is debunked by people who have actually gone to college and have been practicing archaeology and engineering and architecture for, you know, the last 40 years. And it's not that I don't believe there are possible, even potentially probable uh, things that were here that we don't have evidence of. Um, it's just that in light of information that's much more easier to believe, um, it becomes difficult to believe the more fun stuff if you're really in a, a search for truth i guess um yeah i i see what you're saying and i feel like i had to go through some sort of uh thing where i was yeah fall, going down too many rabbit holes that really led to nothing uh, one other interesting thing and this is to kind of frame your mind in a different way like i think oh an ancient human civilization sure but what if they weren't human what if it was just another hominid and, yeah. and like for instance, Neanderthals used red ochre, uh, which, you know, for painting or putting on themselves for uh, sun protection, did art, music, 
Uh, they have wind in instruments, so it's like really Neanderthals, Den Denisovans. They found this in a cave. It's a jade bracelet with a drill hole in it with striations. And it's like, well, how would that be? And it's, I think this one's 30,000, 40,000 years old. And it's like, yeah. well, how is that possible? I mean, the other thing to think about, though, is it's like, okay, so these civilizations 20,000, 40,000 years ago were able to have machines to engineer stuff down to that level of minutia and potentially even in order to trap electricity inside, but they weren't capable of leaving behind any kind of record that could survive that amount of time to say we were here. Good um, point. Uh, it could be maybe we have to look into myths and in all the books around the world. Uh, part of it could be maybe some of that information is purposely being hidden away. So that, that, that would be, be the only thing I, yeah, I, I, well, that would be the only thing I could, I, I could, that would make the most sense in terms of if this is absolutely real that they don't want people to know because I'm like, you can do all that, but you couldn't create a record that survives, you know, it, and think about this. There's evidence too about a cataclysm that occurred 12,000 years ago, but it's evidence from the people that were here that were writing about it in a way that's like is written in about in the Bible. I, well, I, no, I mean like the, have you heard of the younger Dryas event? No. So this is where it then started becoming more real for me other than what's in a Bible. Like, I even was super, super atheist for yeah. the longest time. But it, there, the earth went through a period about ah, 12,000 years ago where ice melted, like, rapidly. And there's areas around the world where some other uh, researchers can show, like, water channels just dug out immediately out of the ground. And that would only be due to, like, you know, water yeah. erosion, large amounts of water erosion kind of showing that the whole earth went through something and it, some say it's a comet impact, a solar flare, something caused some sort of reset. And maybe we lost uh, all that knowledge. I mean, that's a great tragic How many story. years ago was that? Uh, 13, 12, 13, 11, yeah, 11, 12, 13,000, something like that. So we, we have evidence of dinosaurs from 65 million years ago, but a comet hits and there's not a shred. Of oh, there is. There's actually this type but of... It, what is it? Because it can't be a jade bracelet. I mean, that No, it's there's a, a crater, and this is on, actually on NASA's website too because they think it might have shifted the poles a little bit. A, a crater that is about 12,000 years ago. Oh, I'm not saying there's not evidence that there was an impact. I'm saying where's the evidence that there was a civilization that was wiped away because of that reset? True. It, it could be um, they went underwater. The, uh, bunkers. like So the rich now have bunkers they can hide in. What true. if they did back then and they're underwater? Here, here's the other thing I will say. And, 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 and as much as people want to say, oh, you know, uh, China or Russia are socialist or whatever, I don't, I could be wrong. I can't speak with much authority on this, but from my very limited knowledge base of this stuff, I don't think there is currently, if there is a country in, a, in the world that is socialist, I don't think it's a country with enough of a footprint to have this data. I, I, I even like Sweden is not. Sweden's like a democratic socialist or whatever, but Sweden gets closer. The reason I bring it up is I wonder how much, if, if you could say, okay, the majority of the world is taken care of if they get sick. The majority of the world can feed their family even if they don't, you know, work three jobs in certain parts of America, sadly, or whatever. And we weren't so purely dog-eat-dog -dog capitalist. I wonder how much of these kinds of things would fall away and what would be left behind? Because so much of it is hard to know when it's a grift. And so much of it is hard to know whether you're talking religious televangelist or you're talking somebody who just wants to sell a book on Amazon self-published about, I see demons, right? It's like, I don't, I, I don't have the arrogance and I also have the imagination to hope what they're saying is true. But I also know that you're selling a book. Like even, yeah. even Luel Elizondo is coming out with a book. Um, and I'm yeah. like, well, I get it. You have to make a living and I'm excited to see what you have to say, but you, you kind of forfeit a little bit of your integrity. If you're, you know, if you want to write a novel about something else, cool, but you're writing a book about UFOs, of course you want, you know, I, I just, oh, I, Bob I need, Lazar is a good example. He doesn't do anything. He kind of stays in hiding. Yeah. I just saw him the other day talking about a number of people that he worked with in the nineties were killed because they tried to come out and disclose some of the stuff that they knew. So I'm not, I am not it a skeptic. I am not a skeptic. I am not saying, and it wouldn't surprise me either. Uh, I am not saying it's not happening. I'm just saying that I, and I, I don't want to be, you know, you remember like the amazing Randy, you got the sense the amazing Randy got off on debunking this shit. 
I'd, I'd prefer not to debunk it. I want to believe it. But I want to believe it so much that I respect the fact that it's got to be true enough. That's why the UAP Congress hearings have me so interested. Because that's... Yeah, why are it, they go bothering with this? Right. I mean, there yeah. e even when you hear them talk about why they're bothering with it, there is there are trillions of dollars unaccounted for being spent of our tax money. Yeah. Even if that's the main reason that they're interested, fine. I still, it's going to lead somewhere interesting. So yeah. I love all that stuff. Man. Yeah, I no, love the weird. Too. Yeah, that's, yeah, I'll send you some stuff so maybe you can cover mm -hmm. it on a show. But you know what? Um, I think this is it. Last thing I wanted to actually bring up real quick, gaming related, because yeah. uh, yeah. I meant to bring this up, is kind of the future of how people are playing games. Because, yeah. um, you know, like with the ROG Ally, Nova Legion Go, Sony, and even Xbox, they're going to portable handheld. I really think that's going to take off more than we think. In fact, I think it would be, I think, so here's something that's actually on my channel. I built a custom DS. Mm. It, mm. So, like, when you turn it on, it has the touch screens and all that. And this is a, just a cell phone controller, but it's one of the best ones made by GameStar. Oh, okay. um, Red Magic has one, too. It's, like, the same thing. But it okay. feels like a good controller because of the grip. Okay. And so I was like, you know what? When I play games, I want to do it the way I want. Best controller, best setup. So, like, I just okay. built this for DS. But I can easily see Sony or Xbox, they come out with just a tablet, an 8-inch tablet that you can then plug in maybe different companies come out with controllers or they come out with controllers that could be different types another way to make money through accessories but also the big thing and i actually have another little handheld to, that does this is how this just docks like a switch into the right. into a tv i really think if you know especially if these companies want to keep their services sticky make it to where anyone could take it with them wherever they go and yeah I, I i would be very surprised i mean we've already heard microsoft i i don't i don't think dedicated portals make sense um especially now that phones are out there I, I don't think like i mean even the switch is a portal but you can dock it with your tv i don't know what the percentage is of of like how many what, what's the percentage of people who play it docked almost exclusively versus yeah, taking around but I certainly think that that they innovated with, I think, and not the first ones, the, fir the first doc I ever had was a Macintosh lap book that I could bring home as a laptop. And then I came into the office and I slid it into the dock and it was my desktop, oh, yeah. right? Yeah. So, I mean, I, I it, it, but to see that in games, I think is great. I think it, it, I don't think anybody would be stunned if the next PlayStation, certainly Xbox gets into that kind of stuff. Um, I'm a big advocate of streaming because I have great experience streaming. I know I that's where it's ultimately Stadia. going. Stadia yeah. worked for me. I, yeah, Stadia I worked for me great. I played through the Hitman games and I was yeah. I was blown away by the lack the, of buffering. The way you know it works is you stop remembering that you're streaming a yeah. game and you just lose yourself in the game. Um, I, I feel the same with all the, all of them mostly. Uh, GeForce Now is my favorite. Um, but I think all that stuff is, is, is you know, making games more accessible, removing the barrier of oh you have to have a playstation you have to have an xbox you have to have a you know yeah which is what a lot of the fanboys hate hearing me say too you know because they, they and i get it they have a nostalgia and a, and a and a deep love for owning the game and they have a deep love for um being a fan of watching sony beat xbox at e3 when they were 10 years old and oh, they yeah. were the cool kid on the playground whatever and that's kind of um, related to the the director thing you were talking yeah, about with Spielberg. That's right. Yeah. Um, but but frankly, though, if you look at, you know, I have kids that are a little older than yours, but they're not kids anymore, but they're 18, 20. Yeah. But they came up with the Robloxes and the yeah. uh, the Club Penguins and the uh, Fortnites. The, yeah. I, I say this to my people on my channel all the time. It's like, I know that a lot of vocal people that love games that watch my show believe it and they're right for their own point of view. But from a market standpoint, Today's generation doesn't give a fuck about owning exactly. games. The whole console no, war thing is no. going away. It's and, 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 and the physical thing. My kids yeah. have never been like, you know what? I wish I owned a copy of Fortnite. Never come out of their mouth once. That's why I ended up selling my entire collection. I was yeah. able to get a house, actually, mm -hmm. shortly after that. Um, not that's saying what I tell it was people, the whole amount. But. No, I know. But I mean, that's what I tell people now. It's like, you know, I, I remember walking around San Diego Comic-Con right after Twisted Metal 1 or 2. So I was in the industry, uh, Sony had a booth, but g games weren't anywhere close to being what they had become and have become and whatnot. Whereas now it's like, there's a whole video game section, collectors, retro. Yeah. And I remember seeing somebody selling some uh, Atari games and Nintendo games, NES games. And I was like, I wonder if games will ever be like comics where you should collect these things. And obviously they have, of course, but 
I tell people now, it's like, dude, physical's going away. It's I mean, people know that, but it's like, if you want to invest, do two things. Whenever McDonald's has like a Big happy baby. meal that is geek based, like you oh. know, like you know, it's like, oh, like there, there's one back there that I got from a happy meal that's like um from multiverses with like Batman on yeah. one side and Finn from Adventure Time on the other. Whenever there's like a or Mario, anything that's pop culture based yeah. from McDonald's happy meal, go buy it, buy two of them, put it in a box. Don't touch it. It'll probably be worth at least 100 to 300 dollars when you're 30. But, but video games too though because the physical's going away, just Oh yeah. go get them. They don't cost that much even if they're, you know, used or whatever. You're going to be able to sell it even if it's just some sh an army men game from 3DO. It doesn't matter. It's yeah. the fact that oh my god, it's going to be unique in the future. Yeah, and it's not even yeah. like people oh, I be like vinyl. No, it won't because vinyl you can play on any record player. Where where are you where, oh, where, yeah. where are you going to fucking play a game from CD. the PS3 for? I mean, you can't do anything. <laughs> the kids will look at the CD and be like, "Hmm." Yeah, exactly. So <laughs> It's cool. It's a cool time. I, I like yeah. the change. A lot of people, I, lot of people like push it, back on the change. I think the change is fun. That's, hey, meditation. You meditate. Right, you let go. Change. Yeah, That's let exactly go. Exactly right. Exactly. You, yeah. you, you, the, the attachment stuff, you're just like, what am I doing? Yeah. Like when you can see your thoughts and recognize, what the fuck am I worried about? Exactly. And I don't mean yeah. this. That's the hard thing about talking about meditation is a lot of people are already predisposed because of culture and television and stuff to yeah, think that it's some kind of, it. of magical thing. Yeah. And, and so when I say what I'm about to say, I don't mean this as I'm trying to be some kind of guruic, magical, you know, but meditating lets you see whether it is metaphorical or literal, I don't know, but it lets you experience that this is just a play, right? Yeah, that this is just exactly. a show. And I don't, maybe there are people watching it. I'm not being that literal. I don't fucking know anything about that, but when you are able to step outside of the 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 little lowercase you and you recognize it's like none of this is real it's yeah. just relax you're in a, you're on a ride you probably paid for it you probably saved up yeah. all year for the vacation that is to put the headset on it'll only take a day in real time but for you you've got to experience a whole human life cycle like that probably, last episode of next generation star trek with picard do you remember that? Where like he lived the this original whole other life. next gen or the next the generation new Picard? No, the old Picard. Where uh, there, it was like one of the last episodes where like he lived this entire life, and then he was. I'm like, sure I've seen it before, but I don't remember uh, that. Yeah, that was one, the first I, time I, I love, saw that concept, and I was like, "That's yeah. crazy." I I I don't know what's going to happen if anything when we head out. But what I will say though is that one always comes back to me, maybe because of my love of games and entertainment, but. It, it wouldn't surprise me though, because when you do meditate and you just kind of separate and let go yeah. and, and detach, you go, wait a minute, I'm in this, this is a game. Yeah, there's you know? layers of judgment that have just piled up. Yeah. And you have to work through them. And you're just like, I'm just, I'm just here. Relax. Yeah. You paid for this. A lot of money. So. <laughs> yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah. All right, well, cool. Well, this was awesome. I appreciate yeah, thanks, it. Man. I got of so much out of this. I did too. It was a lot of fun to talk to you. Absolutely. Great. Awesome. Love to hear it. So anyway, yeah, I'll just jump. Are you going to continue? Streaming? I'm going to just chat with the chat for a few cool. minutes, see if anybody has got anything pressing, and then I'm going to head off and see what the family's up to tonight. All right, man. Well, I appreciate it. Thanks a lot. Anytime. Be well, buddy. Thank yep. you so much for having me.